Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So here we have another antenna to show you, and this one is similar in design to others that I've shown in the past. However, this one comes from the manufacturer who makes the Q900 and the PMR171 radios that I've also shown on the channel before. Now this antenna is spec'd to cover from 7 megahertz to 430 megahertz with a power handling of up to 400 watts. Now the antenna itself is made from two elements, which are telescopic to allow for tuning to the desired band. And when mounted, they're in a V shape at a 90 degree angle. So that's essentially a V dipole. As you can see here, it comes in a carry case, and I guess this makes it nice and easy for portable use. And you do get two lengths of wires, which are terminated with an O-ring on one end. And this is the wire that you'd use when you're using it for 40 meters or seven megahertz as an inverted V dipole. Now these are around 10 meters in length each. So just bear that in mind. The main ballon is nicely made with a really nice quality feel to it. As you can see here, when you order this antenna kit, you can actually request your call sign to be printed onto it. Of course, if you put your own call sign here, then the antenna will only work for that call sign. Just joking, of course, but it does look pretty if you like that sort of thing. There is a thread located at the bottom, which can be used to attach to a mount of your choice, or you can purchase the tripod mount that can be used with this antenna. Now I'll show you that shortly when we head outside. There's also two further thread sockets there, which are used for the main element. And of course, there's an SO239 socket where you can attach the coax that goes off to your radio or transceiver. Now, I also got sent this length of good quality coax. I don't believe it comes in the kit, but they might sell it separately. Now, I did receive some instructions in the kit, but they were actually in Chinese. However, the English manual is available for download. And of course, you can print that out if you need to. As the main elements of the antenna are telescopic and changing the length of these change the antenna's resonant frequency, it was a little bit disappointing not to see a rough length chart included in the manual. I think if you purchase this antenna, you have to make your own chart so you can remember the lengths of each element for different bands. Now, more on that in a moment. With the antenna kit I received, I also got this. Now, this is a stainless steel tripod, which can extend up to around four meters. Now, this thing is super easy and quick to set up with this easy to use thumb screws for securing each section. There's one thumb screw for locking the tripod legs in place too. You just pull out the legs, adjust to the correct position, and then just tighten up this screw. Now, if you notice, when I undo the lower telescopic part of the mast, it moves up on its own. And that's because each section has a spring inside. Now, this is useful for when lowering the antenna mast sections so they do not come crashing down fast. They're pretty much dampened by that spring. Now on the top of the mast, you'll find a little removable adapter. Now this can be locked into place with another thumb screw here on the top. Now this actually has two thread sizes. The larger thread size is for the antenna's ballon, and then on the other end is a smaller thread, which appears to be the more standard camera tripod size. Once you've screwed the adapter into the bottom of the antenna ballon, you simply just drop this into the top of the mast and then tighten that thumb screw just to keep it in place. Attaching the main elements is just as easy. They easily screw into the threads either side of that ballon. Now you can either adjust the length of each element before attaching it to the ballon or while it's attached. Now I'm sure there's probably a proper way of doing this, but I tried both ways and they seemed okay and manageable. Now at this point, of course, you attach your coax feeder. Extending the mast is again super easy. You just extend that top section, tighten it again before moving on to the one underneath. Now this antenna can totally be erected just by one person, but you can also enlist the help of others if you have anyone else around to help. Having two sets of hoofs is always a bonus. And if you get tired from all this antenna work, you can get them to grab you a glass of milk. The first band that I wanted to test with was actually the six meter band as recently we've had some nice sporadic E. As the elements are not extended that long for six meters, I did feel I needed to secure the tripod just in case a little wind from passing grass gravers knocked it over. 
Now you do not get these securing robes with the tripod, but you can easily get them from anywhere like Amazon or eBay or your local hardware shop or camping shop maybe. Now before heading inside to the shack, I wanted to test the SWR. Now I had no idea if I'd set the antenna lengths correctly. Well, after a little tuning, I got the SWR to where I wanted it. So I put the antenna back up in the air. Now the resonant point does change slightly as you raise the antenna up further from the ground. So just bear that in mind. Now when it comes to testing antennas, especially HF antennas or the lower band antennas, it's very difficult to provide a review that will work for everybody. Propagation, location, antenna height, surrounding buildings, even soil type can affect how these low band antennas work. So the best way I can think of, and that I've used before, is to use FTA and the PSK Reporter website to see how well an antenna will at least transmit. Now six meters was not exactly open at the time of making this video, so I was actually surprised to see a couple of stations from Spain appearing on the display. Using 50 watts from my FT710, I was able to make one contact on FT8. But looking at the PSK Reporter website, my signal was actually getting out, even across the channel. The antenna in this V configuration is most likely slightly directional too, broadside from the V, but I was surprised to see this spread appear on the map. Now the next band I wanted to try was the 10 meter band, and at the time of making this video, the HF bands were extremely flat, but you can always rely on FT8 for contacts, even in the worst conditions. There was literally no SSB voice contacts being heard. I even swapped over to my NFED half-wave antenna just to double check, and that was exactly the same. So nope, the antenna was not faulty, the bands are just very flat. Now the next band for me to try was the 20 meter band at 14 megahertz. Now this time the elements are extended to near maximum. Originally, I had the elements pointing east to west, but I changed them to northwest to southeast. By this time, it was mid afternoon and 20 meters had actually picked up a bit, and I managed to make a quick contact with a station in Serbia. It's a wonderful afternoon. We see you soon again. 73, thank you. Bye bye, sir. Thank you. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mexico Zero. Mexico Zero. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mexico Zero or something, Quebec Whiskey again. again. Yes, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M Zero DQW over. Good afternoon, Mexico Zero Delta Queen Whiskey, and a very good afternoon, sir. Beautiful signal. You are five nine fifty nine, sir. Roger. Yeah, you're five nine plus ten fifty nine plus ten into the UK this afternoon. Thanks very much for the contact. Just give me your name, please, before you go. Give me your name for my log, Roger. Uh, yeah, sure. The name here is Matt Mike Alpha Tango. The name's Matt Mike Alpha Tango. QSL. Fantastic. Thank you, ma'am. Matt. Thank you very much. Matt, thank you very much. I wish you a very pleasant afternoon. And see you soon again. 73, sir. Thank you. Yeah, 73. Bye bye. Oscar Papa 6, uh, Oscar Papa 6, uh, Yankee Portable. Is that the Roger? Now, after this contact, I switched over to FT8 and actually made a few contacts. Not bad with conditions so poor for voice comms. Looking at the map after my little FT8 session on 20 meters, we could see a much further spread of stations in Western Europe and even over to the east coast of the USA. Now this was around 2 p.m. UK time when I was performing these tests. Now later in the evening, I thought I would try this again as sometimes 20 meters can work very well going into the night as the gray line starts to hit Brazil and Asia. Well, this blew me away. I was receiving stations from all four corners of the globe. It was like someone had flipped a switch compared to this afternoon. We had China, Brazil, USA, Russia, and most of Europe coming through now. Taking a look at the map confirmed where my 50 watt FT8 signal was being received. And to me, that's a very decent spread. Now, could I have made these same contacts and had the same results from my infed half-wave antenna? Probably yes, but this antenna is designed to be used portable, something you take camping or down to the beach to play radio. Now at the start of this video, I showed you the wire elements for the 40 meter inverted V that can be used with this antenna. Now attaching the elements is super easy as well. You just attach them in between the main telescopic antenna and the ballon. They're held in place just by placing them over the thread. 
Now, I was not really able to test this part of the antenna as my garden is too short, which is kind of annoying because I really wanted to do a test of a 40 meter dipole compared to my NFED half wave antenna. Now, maybe I will test this at another property soon, so watch out for that video. Of course, I'll leave links to this antenna in the description below if you want to check it out. Don't forget, you can purchase this antenna without the tripod if you already own one, or you can buy it separately. Just watch out for that postage cost as it's actually quite heavy. Well, there we go, guys. That's another antenna tested. Now, I didn't test all the bands in the video, but I did actually tune the antenna to more or less all of the bands that it supports from 40 to 10 meters at least. And these are the measurements that I recorded for the element when I actually was tuning it. Now, I didn't do that in the video. I done it off camera, but you can use this chart as a kind of a ballpark figure if you want to start tuning the elements. Another strange thing was that this antenna was spec to go up to 430 megahertz, although with both of the elements collapsed fully down, I think it came out at around 144, 145 megahertz. So I'm not entirely sure how it's going to get up to 430 megahertz. Maybe you have to use different elements. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.